New Zealand is a kingdom of birds, with only bats and seals making up its mammal inhabitants that would have flown or swam here. However, New Zealand has no native land mammals, but it may not have always been this way. The jawbone and femur of a 16 million year old Miocene terrestrial mammal was found in New Zealand's South Island and was named the St. Bathans mammal. Before this, there have been no fossils of terrestrial mammals ever found in New Zealand, a set of islands that is a thousand miles away from its nearest large landmass. So where did this creature come from, and how did it get to New Zealand? The St. Bathans mammal was found in the Bannockburn Formation. Pre-Pliocene fossils are quite rare in New Zealand, so this mid-Miocene habitat offers a glimpse into a world that is quite different to the more famous ecosystems that existed just before the arrival of humans with the giant moa birds. The habitat was a lakeside beach, and many of the flightless birds that would later dominate New Zealand's habitats could be found here, like moas, only these were their not-so-familiar, smaller, primitive ancestors. There was also an old kiwi called Proapteryx that was half the size of current day kiwis, as well as animals that are still alive today like tuataras. And among all of these interesting animals was the St. Bathans mammal. It was very small, being about the same size as a mouse, and it would have probably lived like an opportunistic rodent scurrying around the beach for food. But how did it get to an island a thousand miles away from any large landmasses? While the mystery of the St. Bathans mammal is actually two mysteries in one. In the early Cretaceous, 85 million years ago, New Zealand was still part of Gondwana, the southern supercontinent that was made up of South America, Antarctica, and Australia, and New Zealand was attached to the Antarctic portion of it. Although Cretaceous mammals have not been found in Antarctica, mammals are well known from Australia and also in South America during the Cretaceous, continents that were either side of Antarctica at this time. This meant that it was highly likely that mammals must have roamed across Antarctica and could have migrated into New Zealand as well. The absence of New Zealand's mammals before the arrival of humans is puzzling then, because if the continents were attached, then why didn't many of them migrate into New Zealand when it was connected, like they did with all the other continents that made up Gondwana? And now the mystery thickens because terrestrial mammals did live on the islands, just in very small numbers and then must have gone extinct some millions of years ago. Examining the femur of the St. Bathans mammal suggests it would have had a sprawling posture not seen in marsupials or placental mammals. Because of this, it was thought that the creature might be a monotreme, which are egg-laying mammals like platypus. They are the most primitive mammals alive today, they also walk with a sprawling posture, and of course, survived the Katy extinction that killed off the dinosaurs. There are animals like Sterepodon, that was a platypus-like monotreme known from the Cretaceous 105 million years ago in Australia and the tooth of a similar animal has been discovered in South America, showing that monotremes must have had a range spreading across Gondwana. Because of this, an early monotreme could have migrated into New Zealand before the breakup of the continents. But further study of their anatomy has led scientists to believe the creature was actually not a monotreme, nor a placental or marsupial, but belonged to a different, distinct group of mammals. This creature's ancestors broke away sometime before the divergence of marsupials and placentals, and probably survived the KT extinction on its own lineage, and then survived up until the Miocene as a completely separate group of animals. And there may have been other species of this group in New Zealand yet to be discovered. However, a problem with this theory is that although New Zealand's tectonic plate may have been attached to Antarctica and then moved out into the South Pacific, the islands themselves may have only recently formed. New Zealand's fauna seems to be made up of recent immigrants, the vast majority of large native animals that are found here are either flying animals or aquatic animals that made a big trip across the oceans from neighbouring Southeast Asia, Australia or Antarctica, and have then taken advantage of the absence of competition found here. For instance, New Zealand's most famous inhabitants, the flightless birds, are from several different flying lineages. The kiwi and the moa are from a group known as ratites, that would have flown here and then become flightless. The closest relative of the kokopo and kia are parrots from Asia, and the kokopo has become too heavy to fly as well, and penguins swam over from Antarctica. The only non-introduced mammal inhabitants are seals, which would have again swam to New Zealand from neighbouring land masses, and also three species of bats that could have flown here like the birds. 
The bats native to New Zealand are known as Meistersina, and similar to flightless birds found here, and unlike any other bat species, have evolved towards flightlessness. They spend a lot of their time on the ground, and unique among any bats, are able to fold their wings up to the point where they look like normal arms and legs to help them while moving across the ground. In the Miocene formation where the St. Bathans mammal was found, there was a prehistoric giant version of these bat species called a Vulcanops that was about three times the size of the current species, and this means that a bat may have been the largest species of terrestrial mammal that had ever lived on New Zealand until humans arrived on the islands. As animals in non-competitive environments tend to diversify more and evolve faster, the high diversity of previously flying flightless birds and more grounded bats indicates the recent arrival of many animal groups to a previously mostly uninhabited island. This has led some researchers to argue that New Zealand was actually completely submerged by the sea up until about 30 million years ago or so, where it was then colonised by its current animals. Even today, New Zealand exists on a giant continental shelf that is mostly underwater, and the islands that make up New Zealand are just a small part of this poking out above the sea line. This only further complicates how the St. Bathans mammal was able to find its way onto New Zealand if the islands might not have even existed until 30 million years ago. However, although the sea level was almost certainly much higher in New Zealand for the first half of the Cenozoic, it is improbable to believe it was ever completely submerged. There are other ancient land animals found here, along with the St. Bathans mammal, like tuataras, leopelmated frogs, and velvet worms. So if New Zealand only emerged from the water 30 million years ago, all these animals would have had to find their way across the sea, which seems highly unlikely. Tuataras may have been washed over by a raft of vegetation, which is how reptiles have gotten to islands in other parts of the world. Even this was very unlikely as well, as New Zealand was over 600 miles away from Australia as early as 60 million years ago. It is most likely that the New Zealand archipelago was never fully submerged, but due to considerably higher sea levels was much smaller when it broke away from Gondwana than it is now. This smaller archipelago was only large enough to sustain small mammal species and the other ancient lineages. But when the sea levels lowered 30 million years ago, there was a relatively uninhabited landmass ready to be colonised by birds. So along with many other animals in New Zealand, like tuatara and velvet worms, the St. Bathans mammal was probably a living fossil, just one that didn't survive until the present day. It was a dinosaur era relic, older than marsupials and placentals, and survived up until 20 million years ago on an island dominated by birds. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video and would like to be updated of future content, then consider subscribing. A massive thank you goes to my patrons for supporting me, especially Greenfors and Fuzzleworth. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to Patreon and make a pledge.